Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be doing a teardown on the GMK Nook box. Now, if you're not familiar with this, I just posted a video, kind of a full review running Windows 10. This is a palm-sized 4K mini PC. It's got 8 gigs of RAM, 128 to 512 gigabytes of storage right out of the box, and it's powered by the Intel Celeron J4125. Overall, for its price and its form factor, I think this is an awesome performing little mini PC. Now, if you're interested in seeing this thing in action, check out my original video. But since then, I've had a few people asking me to do a quick teardown. So that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. So first things first, we need to pull the bottom off here. As you saw, we have those four rubber feet. They're kind of glued on. They have that sticky back. You need to peel them off and then we'll remove these four screws. The bottom should come off of this fairly easily. And once we get this off, we should be presented with the M.2 SSD that they have pre-installed. Now, this one is the lower end version with 128 gigabytes of storage, but you can opt for up to 512 in this unit. And this is user replaceable. So if you did end up with the 128 gigabyte model and want to upgrade it down the road, you can always do that. You're just going to pull this screw out here and the M.2 SSD should slide right out. So they have made this pretty easily accessible. And as you can see, this is not an 80 millimeter M.2. This is a 42 millimeter M.2. Next up, we need to slide the mid case off. This is aluminum here, and I personally like the way they set this up with aluminum. It does offer a little extra cooling for the whole unit itself. Some of the other similar mini PCs are made out of plastic, and this kind of does up the build quality, adding this aluminum case here. So as you can see, this whole unit is comprised of two different PCBs. We have the IO board and the main board. And I love the way they've set this up. It's connected with a ribbon cable, and this is how they're able to fit this in such a small form factor. The bottom board is what I call the IO board. This contains the USB, M.2 slot, and things like that. And the upper board, which I refer to as the main board, houses the CPU, RAM, HDMI, and power input. So as soon as I pull these standoffs out, we're going to remove this bottom plate here and we can now see that I.O. board. We have our RTC battery connected right here, and there's two ribbon cables that just need to be popped up. We can remove that I.O. board completely. So yeah, like I mentioned, this houses the USB 3.0 ports, the 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and the SD card slot. And on the bottom, as we saw when we pulled it apart, this has that M.2 slot. So yeah, this is an awesome way that they've come up to keep the size down on these new units. So as for the main board, this is where all the magic happens. We have an Intel Wi-Fi card here, 802.11ac plus Bluetooth 4.2. It has two antennas connected to it, and it just routes around the upper part of this whole PC. And it actually has some decent Wi-Fi and Bluetooth range. So now what I want to do is go ahead and remove the main board. We have four more standoffs here that need to be unscrewed. I'll go ahead and get these out. And this should pull right out along with the heatsink. Well, I'm not exactly sure if the heatsink is attached here. It might just be attached to the upper case. And it is attached just to the upper case. So let me go ahead and unplug these antennas here just to get them out of the way. And once I have these out of the way, I can just remove the main board. And this has a lot of thermal paste on it. On the original model that I reviewed, they were using a little thermal pad, which didn't cool very well. And it actually had an aluminum heat sink. But this one here, they're using thermal paste and a full copper heat sink. So that's why we have much better cooling on this production unit. Really glad to see that they've done this. But they could have lightened up a little bit on that thermal paste. But uh, I mean, it did keep cool enough like it sits. I won't add as much when I reassemble this unit. But as you can see, we do have that full copper heat sink in here. And this does have a fan attached. This is not a passively cooled unit. It's an actively cooled unit. There's just not enough metal in here to keep that CPU cool without a fan. And it looks like they've used a little of this tape here to kind of keep this heat sink in place. So we got that tiny fan with that full copper heat sink. And this actually does a really good job cooling this J4125 CPU. I did some thermal testing and power consumption testing in my last video. So I was wondering why this heat sink was kind of taped in here. It was taped in here loosely, but then when I pulled it out completely, I noticed that it's actually spring loaded. So these four springs make contact with the upper side of the heat sink to kind of push it down on that CPU and make full contact. This is just another little upgrade that they've added to the production unit to keep this thing cooler. Really glad to see this. 
So yeah, I love the way they assemble these little mini PCs. I mean, there have been a lot of these little mini PCs or these palm-sized 4K PCs released. Xiaomi has one, the Chewy Lark Box, the GMK Nook Box, which we have here, and I believe there's a few other Chinese manufacturers coming out with these same style PCs. And they all use this stackable PCB layout here, but I mean, this is a really good way to fit all of this tech into a super small form factor. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. Like I said, I had a few people asking me about a quick teardown, so I figured I'd go ahead and create a video on it. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on the Nook box, just let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to check out my review video. But like always, thanks for watching.